Hello, ladies and gentlemen, business owners. Today we have a special guest here. We have Mr. Albert Borla, the CEO of Pfizer, who said during an interview with Ms. Megan Terrell, most of these truth-telling lie websites say, yes, he took the vaccine. Yes, he did. He, he didn't take the vaccine until he was forced into it. And then even then, I don't think he took it. We have an actual picture of him from his own Twitter page getting injected by what appears to be himself. Uh, it is absolutely unbelievable, and here we go. In fact, this video today is like a what's my line, and some of you who are old enough to remember what's my line, where you have three or four contestants that are all the same, their same name, Bob John, Bob John, Bob John, Bob John, and you have to guess by questions that you ask, who is the real Bob John? And if somebody's Bob John out there, I'm only using that as an example. This video today is about QA authority, Daryl Guberman. Will a real CEO of Pfizer, Albert Borla, DVM for veterinary medicine, please stand up? Yes, will you stand up, Albert? You have what appears to be Albert Borla over here. And you have this guy over here in the white jacket looking at his hair, looking at his earlobes, looking at the facial features I am no forensic analysis of photographs, but I'm gonna say this, we sent it off to some people that are involved with um, actually Photoshop, very many years in doctoring up photos, and they said with confidence, this is Albert Borla. And uh, he's probably laughing now when he's watching this video. Oh no, the jig is up, or the gig is up, or whatever because you can tell by the forehead, the hair, the hair color, it's the same all the way through. In fact, uh, we had our people just blow it up a little bit and you can see the hair, the ears, also the sideburn coloration. It sure as hell looks like Albert Borla, giving an injection to Albert Borla. You also look at the factor that the needle is not in the arm. When I've seen pictures of Joe Biden, he's got the needle in the arm, and many other people in his category have that needle stuck in their arm. Whether there's a needle on it or not, who the hell knows, but this is not even going into his arm. It's probably about four inches away from the insertion point, which I don't think at this picture he got it, but he was under pressure. You're going to have underneath this video in the description, you're going to have the factor about... Mr. Borla stating to Megan Terrell, CNBC, that he's a 59-year-old man. He didn't have to take it. In fact, his management team didn't have to take it. They didn't want to cut the line. He had vaccine hesitancy, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to say this before this video begins by David Foster Wallace. He stated, the truth will set you free, but not until it is finished with you. So what I'm saying here, business owners and my fellow citizens, is this definitely with probably 99% confidence level with a 1% variance is Albert Borla. Some people say, well, Daryl, the eyebrows are different, the forehead. No, it's not. Look at the ears. Look at the sideburns. If you like a picture of it, uh, down below the video will be actually his Twitter page, which after this video comes out, they <laughs> probably get rid of it from his Twitter page, but we have copies of it. Don't worry, if you need a picture, we've got it. Let me continue on with this because I think you really need to um, see this. It's very important. You have ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, is a private, not-for-profit, non-governmental agency that has both federal agencies and corporations on board. In 2015, you have Randy Dory, then the vice president of ANAB, chairman of the IAF, and principal on their 990 tax form. That means that he had complete control over IAF and uh, ANAP. Uh, he handed over leadership to his communist Chinese national, Zhao Jinwu, who's been involved with their quality since 1994. At the time, he was uh, the chief executive officer of the China National Accreditation Services in Beijing, China. Also, <clears throat> he is mandated by his country of origin, communist China, to take our data through the China National Intelligence Law, Article Number 7. Let's go to 2016. Randy Dory invited me to join either ANAP or IAF. But as a proud American, 
Maybe you aren't proud because you probably didn't know it, business owners, that you, your accreditation by ANAB was watched over for six years by this communist Chinese national. But I did not join because I am proud. I knew about this. I knew about this, this crap that was going on on top of it. I refused because I'm a proud American. Randy, on 2017, it was being advertised on the Department of Homeland Security. We exposed this factor because it's a private concern. It's like Guberman PMC being advertised on the Department of Homeland Security. The reason why I wouldn't be advertised, and they are, and Randy at the time was being advertised as a vice president of ANAP, is because <clears throat> DHS sits on ANSI's board. Not only do they sit, they had a Phil Matheson, who's still there, I think, at that time, he was making $262,000 tax-free as a royalty payment. Now they've changed it since I've exposed that many times to various on their 990 tax report. So it's like having Guberman PMC on the DHS. They wouldn't allow that, but they allowed him because of their alliances and affiliations. Funny thing is, is you have this guy who's mandated, Zhao Jinwu mandated to take your data. Was there a cybersecurity issue with Randy sitting on the DHS? Absolutely, cybersecurity. You also have the factor, here he is, Zhao Jinwu standing in the lab at Wuhan, China, issuing a laboratory accredited certification for the bio level four laboratory in Wuhan. Now, <clears throat> let me give you um, a better picture of that. Here he is standing there. While he's standing there, he is still the chairman of the IF. This was 2017. And <clears throat> a Miss Pamela Sale, of Ms. Pamela Sale, the vice president of accreditation for laboratory, stated that from one laboratory to another, there's variances under deposition, legal deposition in Texas. I have that article. It's uh, going to be down below. If I don't have room, please write me at Daryl, D-A-R-Y-L, T-Q-R-S at Yahoo.com. I prefer a call at 203-556-1493. But here he is. Also, you have Xi Jinping, who mandates to Zhao Jinwu that, um, to take your data through the China National Intelligence Law, Article Number 7. You have the factor here that, um, and hold on a sec, here's Pamela Sale right now, guest, guest speaker here. You can actually read it here. I'm going to hold it for a minute. You can stop the video and read it for yourself. Okay, she says, from one laboratory to another, there are variances, lacking protocols, everything else. And this just not this is not just for forensic labs in the United States. It is for forensic labs, bio level four labs, and also phlebotomy labs and everybody else, all those other labs, mechanical testing labs, there are variances. So she admitted to the release of the COVID virus. To make matters worse, in 2017-18, a bunch of uh, uh, individual specialists went to the Wuhan laboratory. The scientists there were complaining about not having adequately trained um, uh, lab technicians. Well, you have over here Zhao Jinwu issuing a certificate. I guess he didn't check the efficacy of these technicians who were in the lab because he issued the laboratory certificate and you had a situation in the lab that they certified that didn't have enough technicians that were properly trained. In 2019, in May, the CDC came out with this training document for virology, May of 2019. For virology, laboratory, level four, bio level four, that's, a high, that's the highest level in uh, hazardous viruses. And the only organization, the only company in China that it was talking about, the laboratory, is Wuhan, China. On page number three, it states, and here it is, I will read it to you. It states the safety and function of the bio level four laboratory rely not only on the containment facility and biosafety management systems, but also the highly qualified and experienced staff. Many recorded laboratory accidents are related to personnel error. So he handed out a quality certificate that was not really quality bearing. A piece of paper, they got their cash, they ran, and they didn't have properly trained technicians, which should have been one of the uh, quality, um, uh, you know, they're, they're doing an audit. It should have been part of the audit for certification to see that they had enough qualified staff. Well, they didn't. And you can see what has happened in that avenue. 
To make matters more conclusive to you, now this is um, this is a uh, Chinese document. It was made into English, and it is about um, the Wuhan lab. Some of it uh, at the back side. Well, first you saw the picture of Zhao Jinwu. Here he is, right over here in the laboratory as a China National Accreditation Services representative. You also have the factor that in the at the end. You have this, and I have it blown up for you, ladies and gentlemen. And here it is. And it states the first item of business here, where you have Mr. Fauci, then at the NIH, uh, getting inquisition by um, Mr. Rand Paul, I guess of Kentucky, um, Senator. And he asked him about gain of function research, and Fauci said, I don't know. I don't know. Well, here it is right here. And this was from May 17th to 19th, 2017, Upcoming Events, Second China-U.S. Workshop on the Challenges of Emerging Infections, Laboratory Safety, and Global Health Security. Number one, gain-of-function research, gene editing, targeting, and delivery of novel biotechnology. If you look at this, ladies and gentlemen, you can stop the video, read it if you'd like. Uh, you're going to find out that this was talking about pandemics back in 2017. You also have the factor of Pfizer sitting on ANSI's board. You have Pfizer that skipped quality processes and standards that uh, maintain an ANSI ANAB uh, quality certificate throughout the uh, supplier's supply chain. Not only that, any accreditation body that sits on the IEF is equivalent in accreditation to ANSI ANAB. And remember, they are underwriters for any of these other accreditation bodies worldwide. You also have the factor of the CDC sitting over by the FAA, I mean the FDA, and also sitting over by Pfizer. You also have the factor of NIH sitting there over by the CDC, FDA, and Pfizer. You also have the factor that this proves that ANSI ANAB are underwriters taking full legal responsibility of not only the system failures, but also failures in product. ANSI took over complete control over ANAB in 2018. ANSI took over complete control. On top of that, they were sitting on the IF, the International Accreditation Forum, as members, but they are also underwriters. I've showed you this before about Iran sitting uh, on the uh, IAF, and uh, they are, of course, equivalent in accreditation to ANAB. Uh, I'm not going to get here and show you another placard and bore you with that, but you have Iran. OK, Iran, I don't say this about the people in Pakistan, of course, not the people, but the politicians. You have Iran who says he wants to see the destruction of any wants to see the destruction of the United States of America. And and they're they're subsidizing Hamas. So what is it saying about your ANAB accredited certificate on the wall? Daryl, well, I have to take the road of least resistance. Yes. Well, while they're use, utilizing monies. To pay Hamas, you have your certificate up on the wall that ANSI and ANAB, I guess, support Hamas. I haven't heard otherwise. So, <clears throat> here's what an underwriter is. You can read it. I'm not going to read it for you today. I want to keep this video short. Here is the actual one of the government contracts we have that call out ANSI ANAB as an underwriter for the IAF as I told you. And you have the factor, of course, that uh, ANAB sits on ANSI's board. It is a sad state of affairs. You have the FDA that sat on ANAB's board as well. We have that, uh, you know, back in 2017, 18. You have the FDA sitting on there. So everybody is harmoniously getting along. This is what happens, like Albert Borla with this picture, um, with this picture showing that injection. And it's a sad, it's sad. Um, it's sad, it really is. Without a doubt, uh, my, my personnel said that that is probably 99% with confidence, Albert Borla. They're probably going to not come out with anything because they're laughing all the way to the bank, Pfizer is. <clears throat> you have the factor of uh, obfuscation. That's what all these companies use whether it's in medical or aerospace, like uh, Boeing is really in the shitter because the FAA made Boeing an FAA regulator in 2009. We've showed that to you before in other videos. 
And uh, obfuscation is the action of making something obscure, unclear, or unintelligible. And that's basically when you look at this, this picture of Albert Borla. It sure as hell looks like Albert Borla. And you know why I can almost guarantee it is? Almost. Is when he told Megan Terrell, I'm a 59-year-old man, I don't need to take it, I'm not in the front line. And he had vaccine hesitancy to take it. That's what it is. And his board members did too. Is this why so many people are having health issues? Because he knew something about this shot that he wouldn't let you guys know. Isn't that terrible? Made you panic. Made you jab. That to me is not American. That to me is socialist thoughts, communist thoughts. Everybody do the same thing. Unbelievable. My telephone number is 203-556-1493 or Daryl, TQRS at yahoo.com. Today again, this video is about QA authority, Daryl Guberman. Will the real Albert Borla, veterinarian, CEO of Pfizer, please stand up. Thank you.